today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about some of the drought planning efforts other than a state drought planning effort that are ongoing here in Utah. Uh, just briefly about my organization's role in, in working on issues of drought in the state. And then um, probably just a little bit of time kind of brainstorming a little bit some of the questions that we might want to be thinking about when thinking about the Utah State Drought Plan and, and issues that might be important in this. Um, <clears throat> so as uh, just briefly overviewing some of the things that Ashley said, um, the uh, Utah State Drought Response Plan was developed in 1993 and there have been two revisions of this plan. Um, I suspect we'll talk a little bit more in depth about that uh, later. Um, uh, the other state planning initiative that's been ongoing um, is not specifically related to drought, but I think it's important to bring up that in July of 2017, uh, the governor's water strategy advisory team uh, published a recommended state water strategy. Now, this state water strategy is not really directly addressing the topic of drought. This is looking at uh, water supply, both currently and how that water supply is going to look in 50 years. Basically, taking a critical look at answering the question, well, how is the state going to provide water for its residents in 50 years? But it does start to tackle some issues like drought, thinking about climate change, impacts of population growth, land use conversion, and using water in different ways. Um, this does not explicitly um, talk about drought. And, and this just begins to highlight a point that I'll make a couple times in talking about some of these planning efforts that the state of Utah, I think, from uh, a state level on down through local organizations such as water providers, there has been a fair amount of work over the years thinking about future water supply, hel helping answer the question, well, how are we going to provide water as a state for our residents given a changing climate, given a growing population? And while answering some of those questions indirectly, you're talking about the topic of drought, um, there has been much less work in the state looking at specifically what to do in the situation of drought. And, and I think, you know, Ashley talking about uh, the state drought response plan and that it's not, even though we're in a drought and that it's not active right now, I think that just underscores that there is that tendency in the state that while we think a lot about water, we have not done as much to prepare for drought and actually planning for drought. And I don't want to suggest that there aren't organizations that aren't doing work on drought. There are. It's just not as widespread as thinking about water supply. Um, so that's what's going on in terms of state level drought planning. Um, I also just wanted to broach the topic of, of how the federal government can help state level drought planning. And we heard a little bit about that from the National Drought Mitigation Center. Um, but an organization that I work closely with and you'll hear more about tomorrow is NIDIS, the National Integrated Drought Information System. Um, so NIDIS is a federal agency that's part of NOAA that is here to provide uh, both support for drought planning within states um, and also to provide drought information resources. Uh, Utah recently, NIDIS, uh, reorganized how they structure drought early warning systems. We heard a little bit about drought early warning systems in some of the previous talks. And Utah is part of the Intermountain West Drought Early Warning System. And both my organization, Western Water Assessment, and NIDIS work in close partnership on topics of drought, uh, throughout the Intermountain West and myself specifically here in Utah. And this is just, uh, this is just a map here that is showing the uh, Intermountain West Drought Early Warning System. Uh, previously there had been an Upper Colorado Basin uh, Drought Early Warning System, but that kind of split Utah in two. So this reorganization geographically was part to just make this more uh, inclusive with all of the states. Um, so in conjunction with this recent reorganization of NIDIS's Intermountain West Drought Early Warning System, um, Elizabeth Waite from NIDIS and myself, we sponsored and facilitated a drought meeting uh, last November, November uh, of 2017, 
to really broach this topic of drought planning in the state. And while the group uh, that was present there isn't quite as uh, comprehensive as this group, um, we had people from state and federal agencies, uh, the Division of Water Resources, Division of er Emergency Management, uh, federal agencies like NOAA, Bureau of Reclamation, and quite a few water providers. Um, certainly one group that wasn't as well represented, which I know is very important in the topic of drought, is the agricultural sector. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about what some of the interesting and notes to come out of that meeting were, but one of the big take-home messages for me was that there was general consensus amongst this group that there is a greater need for drought planning within the state. And this primarily wasn't coming from the state agencies, this was coming from some of the other participants like water providers that are there. And, and again, I just wanted to underscore this um, uh, feature of, of water planning and drought planning in Utah that there really is this focus on water supply planning historically and, and not quite as much on drought planning. Uh, so I just wanted to talk about a few key messages from this, this meeting last year. Um, we talked a fair amount about uh, what drought impacts are important in the state, and I think this is, uh, that was a really important conversation to start, and, and I think one that needs to be uh, central in this drought planning process. And some of these impacts of drought or exacerbated uh, amplifiers of drought you know, include population growth, agriculture, uh, the economy, public health, wildfire, and environmental issues, particularly those pertaining to water quality issues. And we have some of those here that are, uh, we haven't seen them quite this year, but uh, in the Jordan River system and Utah Lake, we have issues with toxic algal blooms that is not caused by drought, but drought can be uh, a factor that can make problems like that worse. Um, again, there was, uh, uh, so for, <clears throat> we talked a bit about drought monitoring um, as uh, Ashley got into a little bit of talking about the different sorts of tools and indices that we can use to monitor drought in the state. And I think that a key point of that is to really tailor, uh, that there's a need to tailor the tools that we use to identify and look at drought to the impacts that we're most concerned about within the state. There was also uh, expressed that there's a greater need for education just in general on the topic of drought and perhaps consistent messaging on the topic of drought. I know just uh, kind of a personal anecdote, you know, upon moving, moving to this, I've lived in the state uh, about 11 years now, and, and the first times since I lived here where we started to see some drought was kind of in the 2012 through 2015 period. And I know it confused me a little bit when I'd hear about certain cities that might have water shortages and can't water their lawn. Meanwhile, it seemed like most of the rest of the Wasatch Front did not have any water shortages. So I think there's, there's a lot of room for improvement in, in that drought messaging to the general public. Um, and I briefly just wanted to mention that, that what, while I've said there hasn't been a focus on drought planning within the state, that there are organizations that are um, seriously thinking about the issue of drought and how to plan for that. And uh, <clears throat> there are a few local water providers that have received grants from the Bureau of Reclamation to develop a drought contingency plan. Uh, both Weber Basin Water Conservancy District and uh, Salt Lake Public Utilities. And I believe tomorrow Darren Hess from Weber Basin will speak about their work and Stephanie Dewar will speak about Salt Lake Public Utilities work. Um, and then there's just general water, con well, water conservation efforts are not, sp have not been developed specifically as a drought mitigation strategy. This is something that's been ongoing for quite a while along the Wasatch Front, you know, water providers um, goals to reduce uh, per capita water consumption. The governor has also set a goal of, I think, a reduction of 25% uh, um, in per capita water use. Uh, and also things like metering secondary water are uh, strategies that water providers have taken that uh, these have a positive impact on planning for drought. Um, so the second thing I wanted to talk about, that, that was kind of just a, a brief overview of some of the drought activities other than the state drought planning process that are ongoing in the state. And I just briefly want to explain a little more about who I am and, and what my organization does. 
So Western Water Assessment is a university-based research program that's funded through a NOAA program called the RESA program, the Regional Integrated Sciences and Assessment Program. There are about 10 organizations that are regionally based, like mine, around the country. And the goal of our organizations are to work with resource managers, uh, state, local governments, to help them understand how changes in climate, drought, climate change, climate variability may impact their management. And that could be management of water resources, could be management of range or forest resources, wildfire risk, drought risk. And, and the goal of my organization and those like mine are to actively work with resource managers and other uh, you know, practitioners and local governments to work with them to develop usable science. Um, any projects that my organization takes on, we really seek to work with end users of that science to make sure the project is really tailored to their precise management needs. Um, the general goal of, the, of NOAA's program is to build and expand the nation's capacity to prepare for and adapt to climate variability and change. And drought has become a real um, integral part of that for my organization as we work in Colorado, Wyoming, and Utah. Drought and water availability, especially when thinking about climate change, are one of the major uh, issues in this area. Um, and, and just finally, Western Water Assessment, we are uh, based at the University of Colorado in Boulder. Um, I live and work here in Utah and have a loose affiliation with the University of Utah. Um, while my whole organization is in Colorado, the idea of having someone like myself here is that if the goal is to work with resource managers and users of climate information, one actually needs to be co-located there to develop relationships with groups and actually work closely with them. Um, so I, I just wanted to finish. Um, if we had a little more time, I was going to try and engage everyone in a little bit of a discussion. But I think I'm just going to, given the time of this, um, I'm just kind of going to go through and just give some of my thoughts on what some of the key issues and concerns might be when thinking about revising a drought plan in, here in Utah. And I, I wanted to start off with this by, by putting a quote from the, the purpose um, from the Utah Drought Response Plan, which is the purpose of the Drought Response Plan is to provide an effective and systematic way for the state of Utah to deal with emergency drought problems. I think that's really the key part is that the, and where the state can really help facilitate this is in the coordination of all sorts of local, county, and state, and even federal efforts that are ongoing to understand drought and to prepare for drought. Um, so in building an effective drought plan, and by, by no means is this a comprehensive list of things that needs, need to be done, but these are some issues that I thought were of great importance in this process and just wanted to bring these up for everyone to start thinking about this as we will now move into the, the rest of our day where we're going to hear about the experiences of drought planning from three state drought coordinators and then have time to discuss in smaller groups some of these issues. So some of the issues I, I think are, are important to keep in mind uh, are is drought monitoring, uh, what tools to use, how do you identify drought, um, how do drought impacts play a role in that? Um, stakeholder engagement, I think, is a very important issue, too. Uh, I think the, the state drought plan as it is, I think, does an excellent job at including all of the appropriate state uh, agencies in that are related to drought. However, I think it might be a very useful thing to have an even larger group of stakeholders involved in this process. And then finally, just the idea of, of how do you go about actually coordinating these state, county, and local efforts during drought to mitigate these impacts. And while I do not have answers for all of these, these are more kind of posing questions for us all to think about for the remainder of the meeting. So this question has been posed before, but it's an important one, so I will reiterate it. What is the appropriate definition of drought? And it was mentioned a few times already that there are many different definitions of drought. Uh, meteorological drought, where you're just talking about how much rain is falling uh, this year versus the average. 
There's hydrological drought when you're also factoring in flows from rivers, reservoir storage, groundwater storage, agricultural drought. Uh, and then there's also drought when thinking about water supply with like a surface water supply index. And finally, one more uh, definition of drought is socioeconomic drought. So that's taking all of these definitions of drought and then really thinking about impacts. And I think that that's a really important thing is and maybe even a good starting point of what are the impacts that we care most about. And then once you have a good understanding of what those impacts are, where those vulnerabilities are, I think then as a state and a group, we can start to understand what tools might be most useful. Uh, as uh, Ashley mentioned, the state drought plan uses the surface water supply index. Um, and U.S. Drought Monitor obviously is uh, an important trigger to many, many of uh, state drought plans. <clears throat> And then when thinking about stakeholder engagement, uh, Ashley went through all of the different state agencies and divisions that are involved in this. Um, and I, I won't bore you by listing them off again since she did that. But I think a key question is what other stakeholders should be involved in the drought planning process? Uh, obviously, water providers would be important, agricultural interests, and also local and county governments as well because I think that's where building some partnerships and relationships from the state level down to these local and county um, people who have an idea of what drought conditions are like on the ground are going to be very important for identifying drought. And especially when it comes down to uh, the point of if drought is severe enough in certain counties to be able to um, and that have the response plan um, being activated when it's appropriate for certain counties. And this isn't, and a key thing of this is that, that I want to bring up with this difference between what the drought conditions are and the impacts is, for example, here in Salt Lake County, if you look at the U.S. Drought Monitor, we are under D2 drought. So that's a severe drought condition. Um, so if you look at that at, just at face value, that might make you think, well, are there some things we need to be doing to prepare for drought or actions that need to be taken? However, I think as things stand right now in Salt Lake County, there aren't many severe impacts of drought. While it's a hot summer, we had a very good water year, the previous water year in 2017, so reservoir levels are still reasonably good despite a poor winter this last year. So I think it's just really important to really look at both impacts and the actual drought conditions. And then just finally, some thoughts on coordination of state, uh, county, and local efforts during drought is, is just how can the state best coordinate with other, other organizations during drought? Um, and, and I think a key part of that process is really just finding the right, um, the right people and organizations in all the parts of the state and developing relationships with those people so that when it comes time to actually activate a drought response plan that People know that they're on certain committees, what their responsibilities are, and there's already a dialogue between these groups. So when there's actually a drought emergency, that this coordination can go much more smoothly. And I think within this, there's also a real importance of consistent public messaging during drought. Um, both to some degree when a, a drought, uh, when a revision of the drought plan is made available, but also moving forward, um, consistent messaging on drought if there are some actions that uh, individuals uh, could do. Um, you know, say such as some of the messaging we have in terms of air quality. There's no mandatory actions aside from burning or not burning wood at your home, but there are no mandatory actions for individuals, yet there's consistent state messaging urging people to carpool, to drive less during times of poor air quality. And I think during times of severe drought where there actually are some response items that are needed, I think that consistent public messaging would also be something very important to think about. So those were just some, some thoughts for the, as we move forward with thinking about drought plans and the rest of the meeting. And I'd be happy to answer any questions if there are.